we have a pretty fun project planned for today. Does this look like work or what? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think rest has done us good the past few weeks because this is a project we've, it's not that we've been putting it off, it just hasn't been like the biggest fire we need to put out. But I think that we're both excited to tackle this today together, no deadlines, and we're just gonna enjoy it. Oi. In the midst of our chaotic life, something froze in our hot tub. So that's what we're doing today, is we're troubleshooting. We lost all of our water a while ago. Jesse's been wanting to improve the hot tub for quite some time. And then we also want to lower the stove in our hot tub. How's she looking in there? Looks stovey. The biggest problem with the stove being too high is that this stove is made out of aluminum and when you put a red hot fire in there, it is fatiguing the aluminum because the aluminum must be covered in water in order to cool it down fast enough. And because our water level is too low when the tub is full, it's not coming up over the stove. And so when we burn a really hot fire, when we take the stove out, you'll see that this has been softened and it's starting to, to, to cave, if you will. So we need to lower the stove to protect the stove. The, the back end of that is, it's gonna heat better because all that heat that's going out the top of the stove is going into the air, not into the water. So really, the stove's not been as efficient as it could have been, and we're risking damaging the stove even further. I knew this from like the second month we put it in there, but it's been two years and it's not been convenient to go through all this headache, partly because the tub was full and draining it didn't sound fun. This is that point in time where I'm really glad we chose to spend the extra money on stainless steel hardware because none of the hardware is rusted. But the hardware that was on here from the factory is all rusted. Removing these bolts would be really difficult because we put them, we, when we drilled the hole for that bolt, it was extremely tight or snug. And then since then, the wood has swelled up around the bolt. So the odds of getting those bolts out is extremely low. So we probably should just leave the bolts in there. They're not hurting anything, they're stainless steel. And then we'll just move down whatever height we wanna lower the stove and we'll just add new holes. It's like rustic be bedazzling. It is, it is, yeah. Bedazzling is a good word for it, yeah. A couple of the other things that I've been wanting to do with the tub, when we first put this in, we couldn't really decide whether we wanted to put it close to the edge of the deck or bring it in from the deck and it made sense at the time to keep it as close to the edge of the deck to preserve as much deck space as possible. But we find ourselves regularly stepping on the edge of the deck to feed the hot tub stove. So we need to kind of reorient this tub so that it makes more sense for feeding the fire and also for getting in and out of the tub. And then the other thing is the tub base or the foundation is actually leaning away from the drain. So it makes it really annoying to drain the tub because when you drain it, then you've got to tip it up to get the rest of the water out. I think by making these small improvements, maintaining it will be that much easier. Heating it will be that much easier, which means we'll go in more often. It's been a long time since I've been in here with my pants on. <laughs> I think I may have even forgot how we put this together. For those of you that might be new to our channel, our hot tub was one of the first projects on this property. We did a really great video as to why we did that. We documented the whole build, a step-by-step -step video on roughly how we put the hot tub together, how we maintain the hot tub in winter. So if you have questions, check out our hot tub playlist and take a look through those videos. Maybe we answered it in there. I can't believe how much our hot tub has darkened up since we built it. It gets, <laughs> yeah. It's black in there. Look at how hot this got. Wow. Look at how hot That's that. That's charred. It's charred. Ooh. That's another reason not That's to have wild. the stove so high up in the Wow. It's like, it's like gummy. So we bought this stove secondhand and it was important that we retrofit it, if you will, to our tub. This stove is actually a little bit big for our tub. It was designed for a six foot tub and ours is only five. But here on the side, you can see the minimum water level when the stove is hot. And um, we thought that our water level would be up here, but when you put two people in, it all overflows. So the maximum heating 
uh, water level is more like down here in our tub. So we need to drop the stove probably mm, two to three inches, which is gonna make it pretty tight to the bottom down there. So she's free now. Looks like the maximum we can go down is about two and a half inches. So this flange over here got so hot, it actually wow. burned the wood. And you can see that this wood's been charred too. Boink. And there it is. But part of me thought maybe this was the culprit, that this seal maybe wasn't sealing well. I don't know. We can just eliminate that over time. We also thought that perhaps this pipe had cracked or broken. There's the likelihood that none of that's true and our tub is leaking elsewhere, which we agreed is very much a possibility just from being frozen and not being heated. So on closer inspection, do you see any breaks or fractures? Look at this. It's right here. Yeah, that's a good crack. Look really close. That little guy probably happened when we had the four or five degree temperatures and we weren't heating the tub. <sighs> Do I need to say it? Insulation wouldn't have helped, why? Because it doesn't produce its own heat. There's no heat. Insulation doesn't keep things from freezing unless there's a heat source. So in this case, because the tub wasn't being heated, insulation probably wouldn't have helped. Insulation can keep the frost from biting, so that's probably not completely true. The good news is that's an easy fix. <laughs> So it looks like the solution here is to get rid of this piece completely. This is one of those things that I did initially and I knew it wasn't the right thing, but I didn't know how to do it better. And this survived minus 16. I think our initial thinking is when we drain the tub, we want to use this water for something, but we do treat the water. Yeah. Therefore, I don't know that we'd actually want to drain that into the garden. When we drain this, it's not like clean water per se. That's why we're draining it. So I think the idea to hook a hose up to this to use it for something is good in theory, but now we have 2,000 gallons of water at the top of our hill and the yeah. ability to attach a hose to that and use the water for however we wish. So when we first built this, this was the largest water capacity storage on our property. We didn't even have our water system yet. This kind of was our like reserve, our fire reserve. That's what we thought. If we had a fire, it's not ideal, but this is 300 gallons we could try to use to help do something. So now a lot of the ideas that were behind this piece of plumbing have evolved and we've kind of grown past them and our idealism has faded. So let's find a better way. I think what we should do is just cap that hole. So what we could do is put this floor drain back in and then we can just put a cap on the bottom. That way it's there, but uh, let's Doesn't, not- This has a cap. It's like a little push well, thing. Well, so this we is a bathtub well. drain, right? It's like a bathtub drain, but it's spring loaded and it doesn't seal really well around here. We could also look for a new drain. We can look at the hardware store and see if they have a better solution, one that screws down mm -hmm. or something that's really seals well. That's why we took it out. Also, it was inhibiting our ability to drain. So when you're trying to drain a bath, it takes what, 30 minutes to drain your bathtub? and that's about 70 gallons. This thing's 300 gallons, so it was taking three hours to drain this tub. So we took the little stopper off of here so that more water would flow. So yeah, let's see if we can find a better one of these at the store, and if not, we can at least put that back on, but we can cap it on the bottom. Right. So we have a drain, it's not in use. What do you think of the new location? I like it. It might seem to some people that you want to keep the view open and not destruct it with the chimney. But if you think about it, all the seats face the chimney. So if you put the chimney to the back of the hill, everyone's facing the back of the hill. We want to come up the stairs and stoke the fire standing on the deck. Bingo. And we're going to put our wood box 
right here. And then we're gonna move the stairs over here. And this yeah. actually works well because when we come up here, we put things like towels and shoes and iPhones right here. Are we off to the hardware store? Hey, look, we are. But hey, look, our boo-boo's holding. Yeah, good job. Yeah. The solution we came up with for the drain is to do more or less what we were doing before, except instead of having an elbow and a long pipe like we did before, we got a plug. Sometimes when we're at the hardware store, we aren't absolutely certain what length of hardware we need. So we buy a couple of different options. And guess what, love? We were wrong. We need the shorter bolt. Yeah, and then what we do is we just return the long ones. Seems to work well, saves us a lot of time. This is what we're trying to avoid, the death walk. Wow. Halfway done. Ish. Oh yeah, she's tight. <laughs> thing left to do is to put our filtration system in oh. and that involves uh, two bulkheads so we need to drill those out and then we're done so this is the bit that I was using on the pump box and so it's it's definitely generous as far as the sizing goes on the bulkhead so we may want to just check and see if a smaller the next size smaller I think this is a two inch and this may be an inch and a half. Doesn't fit, huh? No. And I think that's the, the realization we came to. So yeah, we need something between two inch and an inch and a half apparently. Well darn it. So normally we would use the tools that we have on hand, but it's really hard to replace a stave on the hot tub. So we want to drill the most precise hole that we can and ironically our hole saws are too big or too small. So we're actually going to take the time and go get the right tool because we've had this problem more than once already and then we can make that uh, cut or drill hole with confidence. We need to make two of them, one high, one low. And so we're going to go do that stuff, grab laundry, grab dinner, and we'll be back probably tomorrow. We got to start, that's it. Yep. <laughs> We're back in action with a one and three quarter inch hole saw. She's toasty today. Why is it so hot out here? Oh my gosh, like you're in a t-shirt. There's this thing that we may have forgot about. Called the sun? It's called the sun over here and it actually generates warmth. But apparently it only comes every quarter. Or every three moons, we get one day of sun. Are we getting any solar power today? <laughs> oh yeah. So I brought our filtration system up here so that we can kind of get a better feel for how it'll work overall. I think we can eliminate this entire stretch here because basically all we need to do now with the bulkheads is come out of the filter and go up to the bulkhead, right? So I'll grab a screwdriver and get this straightened out so that we can just hook it up. We've been stumped again. We bought these bulkheads locally, hoping that they open far enough to fit over the hot tub staves. And it turns out 
they don't. So Alyssa is doing some research, trying to see if maybe we have to lean on the internet or maybe have to go to a local plumbing house to find the piece that we need. So we're gonna shift gears, do some research tonight. Hopefully we can find the parts and get this last little bit. And then, and then we can enjoy hot tubbing. <laughs> <laughs> 